Hola BBs, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Andrea Caterina, but you can just call me Dre. If you're new to this channel, we talk a lot about sustainability, low impact living, intentional choices, thrifting, DIYs, etc, etc. We are out here for the people and for the planet. Today we are chatting about why the sustainability slash zero waste slash low waste movement needs to be more diverse and inclusive. I'm honestly not sure if this is just going to be a shout into the void, but Let's just hope the message sticks. If you are digging my vibe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also follow my social media for daily content. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video so you can see some fellow YouTubers of color within the sustainability space that I will be sharing and promoting. Okay, so to start off, I figured that I would talk about my own experience within the space. When I first started my YouTube channel and my Instagram, I didn't specifically hone in on sustainability. I knew that it was going to be like an underlying tone of the stuff that I was posting, but it was never my sole intention basically to just post about sustainability. As someone who was on the sidelines of sustainability, I got a, a lot of my inspirations from YouTubers, from influencers, and hashtags that I followed. And most of those people were white women. On a surface level, I think I didn't really relate all that much with all those people. The more that I was exposed to sustainability and low waste, the more and more I actually felt like I, I didn't belong or that there wasn't really a space for me. And also I got basically overstimulated with pictures that looked like this or this. Basically this like neutral, boho, chic, hippie-ish, aesthetic was like the face of sustainability and for the sheer lack of representation I was just very intimidated by the space honestly I felt like an outsider and overall I just feel like I didn't really fit in or could ever fit in but that could not be more false this movement is for everybody but honestly the lack of diversity within the space really makes it hard to believe that or even from the outside in seem like it's a welcoming space. And honestly, even within the space, I feel like the odd one out sometimes, but... Oh well. And that's actually one of the main reasons why I decided to go all in on sustainability. I hope that people could see me and realize that even though I didn't fit this really perfect mold of what sustainability looked like that you could still be a part of the movement even if you didn't fit that mold. I mean like can a girl want to save the planet and also want to crush a bag of hot Cheetos? We're trying to be sassy and sustainable. So I think something that we need to acknowledge is the popularity of sustainability literally grew out of a, a place of privilege like buying organic produce, driving to eco-friendly shop, buying new sustainable fashion is a luxury to a lot of people. Even the popularity of buying secondhand and thrifting, I felt like really failed to acknowledge the fact that people have been doing this form of being sustainable for generations. People have been thrifting and buying secondhand out of necessity and not just because it's cool or because it's a trend. I remember seeing some DIYs that their grocery list literally made my brain go into a pretzel. I could barely pronounce the things on the ingredient list, which already made me feel like but then I'm supposed to go out and find those ingredients? Like where? My grocery shop? But or like how? I think this movement and community has gotten a lot better at understanding there are more ways than one to fight for the planet. But when you don't include marginalized communities and people of color, the reality is like you're excluding a whole entire population and group of people from this movement. It's really easy to name 101 ways to reduce waste but if you're not taking into account that certain people have different accessibility than you or different circumstances than you, then the reality is that you are actually only appealing to a certain type of person and you're probably not even providing realistic options for a big group of people. Going along with that, because this movement was centered around white women, we then run into problems with the products that are being promoted, the sustainable and ethical fashion that is being created. For example, a sustainable cosmetic company who maybe internally isn't inclusive then reaches out to an influencer who is not a person of color, promotes their product 
let's say they don't have a wide range of foundations to accommodate skin color, then that influencer is going to promote it without thinking that there's absolutely any problem because it doesn't affect them at all. And like I said earlier, you're just excluding so many different people and people don't even realize there is a problem. Or for example, someone with natural hair having a very limited amount of products to use on their hair when they want to be low or zero waste because certain products or the mass of products were not made with them in mind. And that's why we need to be more diverse in this space and also talk about those issues and then fix them. So obviously representation. So obviously representation matters. We need to see more black and brown bodies within this space, but diversity also means that we need people from all sorts of different backgrounds and different experiences. A big reason also why I actually share about my immigration status and my immigration visa process is because that lives with me every single day. And there are some days where I just like mentally need to focus on being okay. On a day where my headspace is like riddled with thoughts about potentially getting kicked out of a country, worrying about a plastic bag is just not within my headspace or capacity. And that's okay, period. That doesn't make me less sustainable than someone else. I think we need to normalize the fact that people struggle every day and highlighting above I think all else that the point of sustainability is doing what you can with where you're at with what you have that's it that's also why i believe that climate justice also really needs to be rooted in social social justice and i can make a whole nother video about this but it needs to be intersectional if you're not incorporating social justice change within your fight for the planet and your content, then the reality is that you are just fighting for a solution that will benefit a few amount of people. So we can't just ignore the fact that there are people every single day all over this earth that are just trying to survive on a daily basis. And if you in no way, shape or form are trying to make system change or advocating for system change, then honestly, like your DIY laundry detergent post, it just seems a little silly, right? And also something that seems so, so obvious is the more people that are included in this space and feel the ability to join, we're gonna have more ideas. We're gonna be able to appeal to wider audiences and then in turn bring more and more people into this movement. But we have to allow them to be themselves while fighting for the same cause. Ooh wee. I could talk about climate change and social justice a lot. But I think I've made my point for now. I thought a great way to end this video would be to do a little shout out of other YouTubers of color that I uh, learned from, that I follow, and that make great content. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, so please make sure you add some more down in the comments below. Okay, to start off, John Yu makes beautiful content about all things sustainability and intentional living. Both her YouTube and Instagram content is not only informative, but really thought out and clearly curated with a lot of intention. Her content is also super um, educational. Another fave is Penny Tovar is freaking hilarious. She doesn't actually solely focus on sustainability, but she does a few series on like low waist beauty and hair care, which I've loved because I feel like me and her have very similar hair. I also feel like she has a she was a lot more relatable when I first started and she was a great person to find through this journey because she just kept it real. Tyler, also known as Thrifts and Tangles, she's a dream. I found her on IG and I didn't even realize she had a YouTube channel. As you can tell from her name, she focuses on like secondhand sustainable and thrifted fashion, but also she focuses on low waste and sustainability in hair care, home, and honestly just everyday life. Dominique Drakeford is a freaking queen. When I tell you that she slays ethical sustainable fashion, holy crap do I mean slay. Dom focuses on dismantling white supremacy and decolonizing the sustainability movement and, sustain and sustainable fashion. She's here on YouTube, on Instagram, and she also actually has a few blogs where she blesses us with amazing content. 
Tori Cho is an intersectional climate activist who just recently got her channel back up and running. She's also on Instagram and she actually recently started her podcast as well. She talks a lot about mental health and how it affects like many aspects of her work, which I love. I am definitely more excited to see the content that she comes out with. There are so, so, so many creators out there that focus on sustainability um, through different lenses, through thrifted fashion, through inclusivity in the outdoors, through veganism, through ethical fashion, sustainable beauty, and beyond. So like I said, please comment down below some of your favorite creators um, of color within the space. And also a friendly reminder to please pay your creatives, try and financially support them if you can. And if you can't directly give them money, then share their content, engage with their content, tell people to follow them. You can buy their stuff if they have things, you can support them on Venmo, PayPal, Patreon is always a great way. Um, so just be cognizant of that and make sure that you are trying to give back to the community. I hope this video can spark some conversation, can be a good message, and hopefully just resonate with people. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And please subscribe because it really, really will help your girl out. And I will see you next time. Ciao, babies.